My name is Dr. Akahoshi Takayuki from Tokyo, Japan. I'm a cataract specialist working at Mitsui Memorial Hospital in Tokyo. I'm working as an ophthalmologist for 30 years, operating nearly 8,000 cataracts per year. The greatest merit of the small incision cataract surgery, or especially the microcoactural surgery, is that uh, the, this, by this procedure we never produce any surgical induced asthmatism.、Uh, there's no、uh, asthmatism after the surgery. So, and also, the, the rehabilitation of the vision is very quick. The patient can enjoy good vision soon after the surgery. The incision is small, there's less risk of、uh, endophthalmitis. For these 30 years, especially if I start to the microcoaxial surgery, for these eight years, there's no single case, no single case of the endophthalmitis using microcoaxial technologies. Most important point of the、uh, microcoaxial surgery is to protect the incision and making a Very beautiful, clear cut incision is a key point because the incision size is small, and even we use a sleeve on the tip, there might be some damage on the incision. So, making a clean incision so that they can easily see at the end of the surgery is very important. So, I prefer to use a special diamond keratome. s I designed two diamond keratomes one is nano keratome, and the other is ultra、uh, keratome. The nano keratome has a trapezoid、uh, configuration. At the shorter, it's 1.7, and at the bottom, it's 2. And the ultra、uh, keratome has a configuration of 2.0 at the shoulder and 2.3 at the base. My diamond、uh, blade thickness is only 100 micron, very thin, so it is very sharp. I, make,、uh, I use、uh, <coughs> nano diamond keratome or ultra、uh, diamond keratome to make a main incision. And also for the side port, I designed a special small diamond knife. That blade is only 0.6 mm.、Uh, the reason why I make a small side port incision is that after finishing the、uh, microcoaxial surgery, the incision size is only 1.8. The capsule rexis is one of the most important points in the cataract surgery because even we Even if we had a very expensive、uh, biometry machine、uh, to measure the、uh, actual length to decide the、uh, IOL power, if the lens is not the appropriate position in the capsule back, we will have the error of the、uh, refractions. So the lens should be completely in the capsule back at the end of the surgery. So the, I always try to make the capsule rexis. Edge on the optic at the end of the surgery. It is very important to get a good refractive result and also it can prevent the formation of the after cataract. PCO formation is blocked if the lens is fixed by good capsule rexis. Through a small incision, making the capsule rexis is a little bit、uh, challenging. But I modified my、uh, u t r a t、uh, capsule rexis forceps to. Suitable for the small incision surgery. So, using our、uh, familiar u t r a t o forceps,、uh, capsule rexis can be performed uh, successfully uh, with some modification of a new instrument. Hydro dissection is very important because I always pre chop the nucleus. f a c o pre chop is mandatory or a very Important procedure for the microcoaxial surgery because by p a c o pre chop we can remarkably reduce the outer sound NH. But、uh, to perform the f a c o pre chop, one of the important points is sufficient height of dissection so that the nucleus can rotate freely in the capsular back. So I always try to perform the cortical cleaving hydro dissection, and my、uh, hydro dissection cannula is very useful for this、uh, technique. It is a 27 gauge cannula, a little bit bent, and also the tip of the cannula is tapered. So it is easy to introduce under the capsule rexis edge, and also this same cannula can be used to seal the incision at the end of the surgery.
Another small important uh, trick and important point for the hydro dissection is to use a small syringe. If you use a big syringe, 5 cc syringe, you cannot perform the uh, easy hydro dissection. If you use a 2.5 or 3 cc small syringe, you can easily perform the hydro dissection. Phaco pre chop is a procedure to divide a nucleus prior to the phaco emulsification. It is an old technique I developed nearly 20 years ago, and all my cataract procedure is performed using pre chop. Uh, by pre-chopping the nucleus, the total ultrasound energy can be remarkably reduced, maybe less than 10% of the conventional divide and conquer techniques. By pre-chopping the nucleus, each pre-chopped nuclear fragment can be quite easily uh, phaco emulsified, even uh, beginners of the phaco emulsifications. The total energy is less and the total surgical time is less. During the phaco emulsification, especially for the microcoaxial surgery, we need to higher the bottle to pressurize the eye to maintain the uh, stable anterior chamber. But if you take time during the phaco emulsification, there is so much pressure in the eye and it may damage the optic nerve. But once the nucleus is pre-chopped into small pieces, we can remarkably reduce the aspiration time. So we can easily and uh, shortly finish the phaco emulsification. So there is no damage of the optic nerve and also there's no damage on the cornea and cilium and also the uh, phaco time and also the surgical time is less, there's less instance of the infection during the surgery. Any kind of the nucleus can be pre-chopped uh, using a vertical karate technique or the counter pre-chop technique using, I just use only two pre-choppers. Uh, if you have a two pre-choppers, combo two or universal two, we can manage all kinds of the nucleus. But those who start to you perform the phaco pre-chop, I recommend to start uh, from the karate technique. It is very easy and everybody can uh, perform quite safely. I recommend to start from the uh, grade one or grade two soft nucleus. Uh, please start from the karate, vertical karate technique using a combo pre-chopper. The combo uh, karate technique is quite easy. The uh, position of the uh, insertion of pre-chopper is just the center of the nucleus and the direction of pre-chopper insertion is just downwards. Pushing the nucleus downwards, open the blade slowly, everybody can pre-chop the nucleus. If you have any difficulty to insert a blade into the nucleus, it's not a good candidate for the karate technique. You should not try that. You should combat to the counter pre-chop technique. So those doctors who <coughs> first try the pre-chop should start not dense technique, uh, nucleus. Start from grade 1 or grade 2 and gradually you can try on the denser cataract. I tried on any kind of the phaco tip, uh, especially when I start to use the uh, ozil, uh, torsional handpiece, because the tip uh, oscillates like this. The round tip oscillates, there's nothing happen. So I designed the tip, uh, the lateral part of the tip plays important role for the uh, torsional motion. So if I modify the tip overall, I can get more uh, cutting edge on the tip. If I modify the tip square, the flat surface can maximize the cutting efficiency. So I uh, tested clinically several different designs of the tips and found that the square tip is an ideal tip for the torsional phaco. And also the, uh, my invention is that the off-center tip, the old phaco tip <coughs> used to exist in the world as coaxial. The shaft and aspiration port was on the coaxial. But if I place the shaft eccentric to the aspiration port. If I put this tip on the uh, torsional handpiece, it can create a wobbling motion. It can enhance the uh, efficiency of the phaco emulsification. Uh, according to the, my clinical data, not only the soft cataract, but also the very dense cataract can be effectively removed using uh, this wobble tip. And the wobble tip <coughs> is effect not only for the uh, torsional handpiece, also for the uh, conventional longitudinal uh, phaco handpiece, it can create a wobbling motion at the tip. So the, uh, compared with the conventional coaxial phaco tip, it can be more efficient phaco tip. 
another important point of the <coughs> uh, FECO tip uh, to use uh, after pre-chopping the nucleus is that I always use my FECO tip bevel down so that the, the, I can make a complete occlusion of the tip to the nucleus. I mainly use a vacuum to remove the cataract and only when the tip is occluded and clogged, I use a small amount of the outer sand energy for the purpose of clearing the tip. But uh, <clears throat> if you use a Kerman tip, the Kerman tip is bent against the bevel. So if you try to make a complete occlusion of the Kerman tip toward the nucleus, there is so much stress on the incision. And it may damage the incision by the thermal, thermal, it may cause the thermal damage or the mechanical damage. So the uh, Kerman tip is not suitable uh, for the phaco marcification after phaco pre chop. So the, I designed uh, uh, a new tip. The tip is bent toward its bevel. So with this uh, uh, reverse Kerman tip, I can easily make a complete occlusion of the tip toward the nucleus. And I, uh, the tip shaft is parallel parallel to the incision, there's no stress on the incision. So there's no mechanical or thermal damage, and I can make a complete occlusion, so the total outer sand NH can be less. So with this reverse Kerman tip, uh, I have a uh, bubble design or the square design also. The conventional IA tip, uh, the outer diameter of the IA tip was one millimeter. But through 1.8 small incision, uh, it is not comfortable to move around such a big, such a big IA tip. So I designed a special uh, small IA tip. The outer diameter of this tip is only 0.7. So through this small uh, incision, I can easily uh, move around the uh, IA tip. Especially my uh, curved IA tip, it is curved like this. It's an ergonomical design. I can reach any part of the capsular back quite easily, and even in, under the sub-incisional cortex can be removed quite easily using this new IA tip. Uh, I have the ball IA tip. The aspiration port of the ball IA tip is drilled 45 degrees to its main shaft. So I can easily uh, make a complete uh, uh, vacuum of the posterior capsule. The posterior capsule can be perfectly polished uh, with this uh, ball IA tip safely. With the ball IA tip, the tip is uh, curved or bent. It is not necessary to move around. It just by uh, rotating the tip, I can reach many parts of the capsular back and the cortex can be quite easily removed. Even though uh, I could successfully remove the cataract through 1.8 mm small incision, if I cannot implant a good intercular lens, there's no sense. So the, uh, I developed a technique to implant this 6 mm optic acrylic lens through this small incision. This technique is called uh, counter-traction implantation technique. With the conventional monarch uh, screw type monarch injectors, uh, we cannot provide a counterforce to the eye. So I designed uh, the unihand syringe type injector called Royale. To implant the lens through a small incision, we need uh, some sort of the counterforce to the cartridge. As we have only two hands, we cannot screw the uh, plunger and uh, I don't have a third hand to uh, fix the eyeball. So as we don't have three hands, the uh, uh, counter-traction implantation using screw mechanism uh, injector is not possible. There's no challenge in my cataract surgery. Uh, if I use these uh, new instruments and new techniques, the cataract surgery can, can be performed quite easily and quickly and safely. I can operate to more than 60 cases a day. Usually I operate more than 60, nearly 60 cases. Uh, I can operate uh, more than 12 cases per hour. All the procedure is performed through sub 2 mm incision and I can implant toric or multifocal uh, lens uh, through this small incision. 